Decided to do this build a little, a little differently than what I've done in the past. I usually just do Facebook or Instagram posts, but I uh, thought it'd be pretty cool to do a little vlog, follow along on the progress, and uh, I'll either do updates uh, weekly or I might put them all together at the end. I don't know. Just depends on how much uh, time I want to put into the freaking videos instead of the project. But we'll see. So what I got here behind me. This is a, an old rusty frame from a 78 F100 short wheel base. I uh, actually picked it up in a deal on one of my previous builds on farm truck. I know a lot of you guys probably know which one that is. Um, I got the cab and everything off of this frame and it had the twin I-beam front suspension and uh, didn't even have a rear end. So I just basically had the frame sitting over behind my barn for the last two years rusting down and I was like, yeah, what the hell, might as well build something out of it. So uh, <clears throat> picked up a Crown Vic front end somewhere along the way. I don't know, I had it sitting over there for a while too. I forget when I got it. I get so many fucking parts. So It's back there. I've got it all torn out, uh, torn torn apart. I'm going to rebuild it. But essentially, if, if any of you guys are car guys, uh, or hot rod guys for that matter, you know about the, the Crown Vic swap, Crown, Crown Vic front end swap on the F100s. And that's essentially for, uh, I think clear back to like maybe 51 or 52 or something like that, up to mostly the 60s era Fords. Not many guys are doing them on the dip sides, the 73 to 79s, but uh, frames are essentially the same, widths are the same, everything bolts up up front. I'll show you a little bit of detail here later, but probably can't tell from, from that angle. But I've already got it cut out, the holes drilled, and crush tubes loaded in for this thing, but it's the exact width as the uh, factory Crown Vic 2003 plus front end. So it's a pretty neat swap. It gives you the disc brakes and rack and pinion steering and uh, you can go with the coilovers or the strut assemblies that come factory on this Crown Vix, but I'm opting for airbags on the front. I'm going to, as always on all my builds, I seem to make it a little harder on myself than what I probably should have, but I'm going the hard way trying to bag a Crown Vic front end. Uh, so essentially that's where I'm at. <clears throat> I'm going to drink a few beers here and fix my welder. It crapped out on me. The liner went bad. so. Fix that and uh, get to welding. So, all right, let's get to it. All right, so there's the Crown Vic front end. Uh, it's all torn apart, disassembled. But here's the base. You got some centering dial, dial pins um, on both sides. And then these will come down. Those rotate down. Your frame sits in there. Now this width, this distance from from here up to here, is actually a little wider than what the standard Ford frame is. <clears throat> and as you can see, that actually sits up about an inch from the top of the frame rail. And this is just a it's just standard three quarter inch pipe standard wall. These are essentially just crush tubes is all they're going to do. But I've got the 16 millimeter hole drilled in the bottom with the tubes. They're just tacked right now uh, coming up. What I'm going to do here so I'm going to weld it out, and I'm going to cut it off so I can put this nut on, and I'll weld it down to the same height. What that'll do is that'll allow me to have, I mean, zero slack essentially in the bolt coming up from the bottom of the frame rail, which is coming up through here, 
it'll thread in here that'll give me tension on the bottom of the cross member and then oh let me get a bolt here sorry for the shitty camera camera skills here So this sticks out, I'll have it threaded on, so I'll have torque um, on the bottom half of the bolt, and in the top half there's another nut that comes down and clamps that top, it clamps on that section right there. That way I'll have, <clears throat> I'll have torque applied in both directions. So I'll have the bottom of the cross member torqued and the top. Uh, you don't really have to do this. Um, I've seen a lot of guys do this swap where they'll leave this. Uh, it'll be a little tighter hole or they don't even do that. They just have the piece of pipe here uh, just acting as the crush tube and then they <clears throat> they will just put the nut in right there and uh, Tighten the son of a bitch down, and that's all I do. But, like I said before, I make things a little harder on myself, and I also like to overdo shit, so I'm doing the double nut method. I guess that's my uh, engineering curse, being an engineer for a living. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, weld the bottom of these things out and then I'm going to grind the top of them or cut them off and grind them down and weld that nut on. I got those suckers cut off both sides. Too lazy to roll over there. And again, I apologize for the horrible, horrible cameraman ship or whatever the hell you call it. The suck balls. Yeah. So, got them welded up on the top here. Looks like shit, but I don't really care. The water's been fucked up for a long time. Like I just finally figured out. My uh, liner was bad. I fixed the liner. 
and put a new one in there. And then I think uh, somehow along the way, probably whenever I got pissed out at my farm truck, I got the drive roller switched. I was running the wrong groove and the wrong pressure on the drive roller. But I think I got her fixed. So, back to the stand here. Some, some more boring camera. idea of what I'm doing. Bolt's going through the bottom. I'll be able to tighten it up, actually tighten it down. I'm going to actually weld these nuts uh, right here to my crush tubes. See if I would have known, and the easy way around this, is on the Crown Vic frames when you actually go, if you go to a scrap yard or if you buy one like I did, Doing research before, I thought I got all the parts I needed, but actually in the Crown Vic frame, they have tubes like this that are already threaded on the top. So this is the exact way that the Crown Vic frame uh, and this cross member is bolted from the factory. I'm just recreating it with some random parts. But if I do it over again, <laughs> I'll get the freaking factory tubes. That way I want to do this. And you kind of want to check to make sure this is level, or well the mounting surface is parallel to the frame surface. That way you get an even uh, distribution of your bolting force. And it actually holds on there good. <clears throat> so these are like this on both sides. And then when it's all said and done, you'll take the factory nut, mount it in. So this top, top mounting arm is uh, torqued down as well. So that way this sucker is in there getting tight and it ain't going anywhere. How well I'm doing, you know, super freaking awesome donuts and burnouts, the fucking thing won't break in half. So. Now what I'm going to do, since this is where I want it, at least I think it is, yep, I will uh, pull these arms back, weld these puppies in, and I better tighten up. these suckers in, these nuts, back the bolts back out, back the bolts back out, yeah. Um, hell, I won't even have to do that. They're fucking done after this, so actually I'll weld those in, tighten them down, slip these suckers on, bolt it, and that's that. It'll be in. Uh, I could do that. I actually got to finish these pieces out here. I've got inserts to put in and then I'll weld these back out. I just, instead of fucking with the hole saw and trying to get it just right for these tubes, I just cut the bitch out. So it's a heck of a lot easier that way. Uh, you can do whatever you want when you do it, but uh, that's the way I'm doing it. So yeah. <laughs>
this down. This one's a little tight fitting, but it should be all right. Put the nuts on up here, and that's that, boys. Should be in. Nice and tight. Probably end up just so I get a decent mounting surface under here on these nuts. Uh, end up throwing a couple washers under there just to give it a little bit more of a bearing surface. Again, probably not needed, but uh, personal preference. These are just 16 millimeter. That's another thing. Uh, took me a while, actually, a little bit of trial and error to try to figure out the size of the actual bolts that these Crown Vic front ends uh, come with, the bolts themselves. I looked on the internet and looked on Ford's site. I uh, finally found 16 millimeter, but didn't give me a specific thread pitch, although I found out when you get to, you know, the larger metrics, you don't have very many options. So uh, it's actually a 16 millimeter with a number two thread pitch. Uh, again, it is metric. But these are just 16 millimeter flat washers. Those are 16 millimeter on two bolts. But these, these washers, will give me a little bit more uh, of a bearing surface or mounting surface, whatever you want to call it, for these puppies to actually sit on. cinch down. So. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pieces that I have welded, or <laughs> fuck, pieces that I have cut and weld them back in. Uh, these pieces that I cut out of the frame, the top, the top of the rail, to uh, fit my crush tubes in. I'll get those suckers out and uh, weld them back in. Probably do the easy way out. And weld them and then cut the excess off here. That'll be that until I get some steel, and then I'm going to box these frames in, both these uh, the frame rails, give it a little bit more rigidity, a little bit more strength. Putting the big Cummins diesel in here, so I'm going to have a lot of a lot of weight up here, a lot of weight up front, straight off this cable or cross member. Let's get to it.
got them welded in. Feed them back in. Tubes are welded up. At this point, the only thing left to do is box it. Which I don't have the steel for that right now, so I've got to wait to get my steel order in and get that here. But uh, for now, just for the well, for shits and giggles, I'm going to bolt this thing up. All right, so she's bolted in. Got the crush tubes. Got the welded nut up here. And then I got my frame welded back in. Bolted here. Same goes for over here. And you can kind of see in this camera shot how the mounting surface runs parallel to the top of the frame. And you want to keep that same distance between there just so you're not you know, cockeyed. Uh, you get the most bearing pressure that way. It, it, structurally, it's, it's just better. But I think that's all for tonight. Well, that does it for tonight. Uh, actually, got a lot done for tonight. Um, got the welder fixed, which I'm pumped about that. There for a second, I thought I was going to have to buy a new welder to, to do this project, but which I still might. Though, I'm always like a new welder. Anyways, uh, there was some good stuff in there tonight. Uh, on the video, but I'm sure there's a lot of boring shit. I apologize for that. There's probably going to be a lot of that here. Just a lot of grinding and welding and cutting. I mean, that's just part of it, man. Whenever you're doing doing your own chassis, uh, doing shit like this, it's a lot of custom work. Nothing really just bolts on, even though they say this is a bolt on. Shit. You got to do quite a bit of welding. Uh, I just got the camera yesterday or else I would have, you know, went through everything else that I've done, but uh, a lot of the work was cutting out the twin I-beam suspension. I mean, that thing was a bastard and a half. Uh, Ford, man, they, they didn't want that thing to come out, I'm telling you what. It was riveted and welded. Uh, it took me forever with the freaking torch, but... Now that I got all that out of the way, I got this sucker welded in. I'm going to put a steel order in here tomorrow. Um, probably go with 3 16 inch plate. That's usually what I use anytime I'm boxing a frame. But uh, box this sucker on either side. And uh, then I'll start adapting the airbags to the front end here. And that'll be pretty fun. So, Big Scooby. What do you say, buddy? So, yeah. We'll uh, call it quits for the day, and see you next time.